It is the Riot Podcast. This is the Thursday, July 13th edition. In today's show, you'll hear us talk about LeBron and uh, his big announcements from recently. We also do Choice Champions. And tomorrow in the show, what you will hear of and see is us trying the new IHOP Pancake Tacos. We're going to do that, a, a fun little food fight in honor of Isaiah's birthday. Real excited. And with your birthday coming up, here's what I was uh, wondering. Do you remember, did I get you a birthday gift last year? You did not. Are you sure? I'm fairly certain you didn't get me a gift. Hmm. I've been deci- trying to decide if I have to get you one this year. And I've, if, I, if I got you one last year, I have to do it this year. Well, you might have gotten me one. Oh. <laughs> all, oh. The, all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, did Nikki get you one? Um, I don't, I feel like Nikki did. You think so? I think she might have. I think she did too. I think she got me something small. She was a big gift card. Yeah, I think she gave me a gift card. Yeah, no, it would have been a gift card, whatever I got you. But you didn't give me anything. You don't, you don't think I did? I'm fairly certain you didn't. But also if it was a gift card, then I wouldn't have remembered. But see, here's the thing. For Nikki's birthday, I know I I would get her a gift card. For Nikki's? Yeah. See, I don't want you... I don't want you to give me a gift card. You don't want me to do that? No, no, don't give me a gift card. Why not? Because that feels like you're just giving me money. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah. And then you give me one at my birthday and we're even. we're just even. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, but it'd be better for the show if I give you a gift. I think you should. If if you're going to give me a gift, I want to... I want a real one. Well, your birthday's tomorrow. It's a little late for that. Well, maybe you should have planned it out if you wanted to do something special for me. I'm turning 25. Uh-huh. Remember when you were 25? Yeah. You remember that birthday like it was yesterday? Uh-huh. You remember that, what you got? It wasn't what, very long ago. What did you get? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I feel like maybe you should just give me something funny. You just have to be tomorrow. Yes, it does. Tomorrow's your birthday. I know, I know, I know. I guess no gift this year. I was gonna, I was gonna get you a gift card. I'm That's sure like you the were. tradition. I was just thinking. I'm sure, you were. It was just an odd thing because I was thinking with Nikki's, it was no question. Oh, Nikki's definitely. I would definitely are, give her a gift. What are we gonna get Nikki? Like, what are we gonna gift her that she would want? Yeah, right. Like, there's no way I could get Nikki a gift. Uh huh. I wouldn't know what to get her. I wouldn't know. She's either. a girl, and she she always just talks on the show how she just wants gift cards. Exactly. That's all she wants. If you give her, if you got her a gift, she'd be upset. Yeah, she she would. She would prefer a she gift prefer card. She would prefer just a gift but card. But I always knew there was. It wasn't even like pressure. It's just like just known. I was like, oh, obviously, I'm gonna get Nikki a birthday gift, and it will be a gift card for you. I was like, I could. I, I might be able to get away with not getting him any. You can give me nothing. I would not would not bother me in the least. Yeah, but then I won't but, get anything when it's my birthday. No, I would definitely get you something. Well, then, then I have then to get you bad. something. Then you'll feel bad. But also, this is like the first. This is the first birthday we've had together on the show. Yeah, when, when it's, it's just, just been the two you of and us. I. Uh huh. Because like obviously Nikki leads the way with all that kind of stuff. Yeah. When she was on the show, she would just do it. Like, I, do I have to get Hudson a gift card? Nikki's gonna get him one. Right. Obviously, she's gonna take she's care of that. She's got it covered. He's gonna get a gift. Do I have to get him one? So now that's just you and I. Like, if you don't give me anything tomorrow, I won't be upset at it, all. I it's a lot of pressure on me because it's it sets the precedent though for the future of the show. See, I think we should do no gift card, baby weird gift. Baby weird gift, huh? Yeah, it should be the thing. But that, we're not gonna we're not gonna start that tomorrow because it's too late notice. Uh, it we might should not be. We should have talked about this a couple days ago because I've had plenty. Of, I've been asking. I mean, I ask a lot of people to give me gifts. Uh-huh. I'm a big gift asker. Okay. And so you don't have to get me one <laughs> because I've already, I've already asked my mom. Oh, yeah. My, bro- my, my brothers and I, this is what's crazy, is my brothers and I all get each other like gifts for every, hol- every, 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 every birthday. Yeah. And my brother just sent me a picture of what we should get my younger brother for his birthday. Uh-huh. And it is, I was like, is he graduating from college? <laughs> Why is it such a big gift? Like, this seems outrageous. Uh-huh. We, it was like a $400 gift. Is it a special birthday? No, he's, no, it's not a special birthday at all. I mean, I guess I mean, he turns 21. That's think, a special birthday. What yes, are you talking about? But that doesn't mean he gets this big gift. That just means he gets a new license. Yeah. He doesn't need a $400 gift. I would say it, but sometimes he listens to the podcast, uh-huh. so I can't say it. But my brother texts me, and he goes, you want to split this? And I was like, Split? Why don't we call mom and dad uh-huh. and be like, do we want a four way split this? Yeah. And I'll throw in a hundred dollars, not throwing two hundred dollars for a random birthday. I don't think I've ever spent two hundred dollars on anybody's gift ever. Christmas, you had to have. I don't know. 
Yeah, maybe my wife. Probably your wife on Christmas. That's yeah. what I was saying. I'm like, I didn't even spend this much for him on Christmas. Uh huh. And you forget about birthday. Forget about birthday. Birthday's like a fifty dollar, fifty dollar max. Yeah. On a birthday for a brother. All right. So baby weird gift for you. Yeah, like a like it, a brown keychain or something. It can't be. It can't be that weird because I can't order it and get it get here in time. So yeah, just go to your local. Local place. I'll just go dilly dally in the aisles. And yeah, just see what you can I find, find at Kroger. Yeah, at the uh, at the weird end caps. Well, that's, that's, that's what we're looking for. That's what's coming up tomorrow on the show. And today we already we already kind of went through it. So went through uh, a bunch of it. Also check out our Social Club Misfits interview because uh, we talked to them. A Real grand interview. Yeah. Real good stuff. Love those guys. Oh yeah, they were fun. All right, catch you next time. See you guys. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio U. It's not all fun and games at McDonald's. Sure, they've got National French Friday today. They've got the Grimace Shake that's doing wonders for them. But uh, there are some people that are upset with McDonald's these days as well. I don't know if you saw this earlier this week. The McDonald's made the announcement that they're phasing out some of their bakery items. Oh no. Yeah. This is a disaster. It's and people are people are getting upset that the cinnamon roll, apple fritter, and blueberry muffin will no longer be offered. They're being phased out by most McDonald's locations here right about now. So if you're if you're rolling up, especially like later in the day after breakfast and you were hoping for for a muffin or something like that, not happening. Well, at least it's those three, you know? I know. Like, because all three of those are pretty, they're pretty trash. Yeah. We can all, we can all admit that, right? We're not, all on the same page not, there. Not all of us, because I'm looking at, you know, like, the posts that are going around online and stuff, and people are upset. Some are saying they, they love the cinnamon roll, which I can't. If you love the McDonald's cinnamon roll, wait till you get introduced to any other cinnamon roll in the entire universe. Yeah, has anybody ever, ever made you a cinnamon roll, like, at yeah. home? You ever you ever go to the the grocery store and go to the, the pick out the Pillsburys? Just Wait, make them yourself. It's the, like ten times. It's like one of the few things that you can make at home mm-hmm. that tastes better than if you go to a restaurant. And forget about uh, forget about Cinnabon. For, oh yeah, not even close. That. Uh, people are yeah they they enjoyed. I can't say too much about the blueberry muffin. I don't hard know if, as a rock. Yeah, was it? It was bad. Hard as a rock. I don't I. I don't find that hard to believe, but I don't think I ever had it. And then the apple fritter, I don't know much actually about that either, but... I think of all three, that might be the best one. Yeah, but that's not saying much. Which is saying very little. It really... Because the cinnamon roll also at times hard as a rock. Yeah. So those, they're going by the wayside. Those three items, if you enjoyed them at McDonald's, no longer. I just, I do find it shocking that anybody was that attached to them, that they're going to be upset. But I do wonder, um, if you look back a little while, McDonald's was testing out the idea of having Krispy Kreme donuts, kind of like you would see at a gas station or whatever, mm-hmm. and having those as an option. And I wonder if maybe something you'll see in the near future is that that will be a nationwide thing that they actually go with as kind of a replacement for this. Yeah, maybe they're going to fill in with something else. But for right now, I'm okay with these ones being phased out if mm-hmm. it brings something better. Yeah. Or, but as long as they don't take away, like, the apple pie and the chocolate chip cookie. Oh, mm-hmm. no, no, those are staying. Those are the important ones. So as long as we keep those going, I'm fine for now. In fact, I even saw, and I saw this, and I didn't get it because it was at the airport, so it was $8 or something like that. But mm-hmm. they now have a new cookies and cream pie. A cookies and cream uh-huh, pie. Uh-huh. Interesting. Yeah, something we might need to, to dig into a little bit in the future. So there are, obviously, a million other options there for you at McDonald's. A million other better options when it comes to muffins and cinnamon rolls elsewhere as well. So, but you've been warned now, no more McDonald's cinnamon rolls and other bakery items. I'm sure this is crushing news for someone and I'm sorry that it is, but at the same time for the majority of us, I think everyone else is okay with that. Yeah. That's going to be something that's taken off the menu at McDonald's, the blueberry muffin, the apple fritter and the cinnamon roll. I mean, sad to see them go because I'd like to have a little bit of versatility in my life, uh-huh. but these would never be an option that I would ever think is realistic. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow I think we'll manage. Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. Remember uh, right after the Lakers got knocked out of the playoffs this year when LeBron was like, I don't know, I might retire. 
That little attention seeker. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot about it, too. I think it's because everybody knew at the time that he just wasn't serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He got, a, he got a nice little news cycle out of it, and nobody believed that he really was considering retirement, even though it would be reasonable, But because uh, he is getting on in years, and he's been doing it for a long time. But everybody knew he was going to actually come back and play, right? And uh, the reason I bring this up is because last night he confirmed – that indeed he is going to come back and play. Well, thank goodness he yeah. confirmed that because we were on the edge of our seats. Uh huh. Is he going to come back? Um, LeBron, we get it. Yeah. The, Yet again, you want attention. I'm with it. I love you, LeBron. I'm a LeBron fan. But at the same time, what are we doing here? What did he say? He says that the day I can't give the game everything on the floor, uh, that day is not today. Is uh, Basically, his little quote. So he's given the he says he's given the court, given the game everything he has, and that includes for this upcoming season. Well, that makes sense. I mean, I don't know if any player has averaged twenty nine points a game, eight rebounds, and seven assists, nearly a triple double, and never retired that following season. Yeah, that would be that'd be quite unusual. I'm just glad we can put all this talk to bed. We can stop, you know, having our NBA previews of 20 for the 2023 24 season, and it can stop having the asterisks of if LeBron comes back. Now we just know. Yeah, because we were all so worried before that he was not going to make a return. Yeah. I can't wait till I get old enough to, to do this. You think it's too early to start? When, when are you, but you don't have like an end of the season though. So I could just constantly fuel spec on this very show every day. I could just be like, I don't know if I'll be back tomorrow. Could be my last show. Yeah, you might want to tune in to see if I'll still be here. You know what? I think it would be more unlikely for LeBron to not return than for you to not return. You think it's more likely that I that I wind up disappearing? That you disappear? Maybe yeah. not even by your own choice. Oh, yeah. No, that's definitely more likely than LeBron retiring. Like, you getting canned is more likely than LeBron <laughs> not coming back for the Lakers uh, to play in this next season. <laughs> yeah, I can't even disagree with you on that. <laughs> I cannot. Well, thank goodness. Uh, I'm sure Lakers fans and just basketball fans in general got to be excited. So, LeBron putting all this conversation to bed. He'll be back. Hey, you know, whether you hate him or you love him, you got to enjoy some greatness. You can't deny that he's not good. Yeah. He's grand. Like, even if you hate him, you got to know that. And the Lakers would just suck if he wasn't there. Oh, they'd be terrible. Find more Riot content online. Riot.radiou.com What's the reason that you work out? Did I go to the gym? I mean, you can answer. People can text in at 8772-RADIO-U and give their answer. But what what do you what do you go? I know you're a big workout guy. Why do you do it? To look good. To look good. To look real good. That's my plan. Yeah. No other reason one for day, me. One day you'll get there. I know. That's that's the constant goal is to be able to take my shirt off and not have women women laugh. That's, that's my goal. That's the idea for you. This is interesting. I have a survey here. They do this every year. A com- uh, I don't know what this is. A company called Mind Body. But uh, they survey people every year kind of all about working out, going, getting their exercise in and everything. And in 2022, the, the, they just released the results. People actually, the top reason for exercising was to reduce stress. It wasn't to lose weight. wasn't to look good. It was to reduce stress. I don't know if I believe that. You don't believe it? It's, I mean... 17,000 people they talk to. Yeah, but I just can't imagine, like, when I leave work, uh-huh. if I wanted to relieve stress, I don't, I mean, I, I, I think it does relieve stress going to the gym. Yeah. But if I was having a real bad day, I wouldn't be like, I got to go to the gym right now. At the gym, I like, unless you love the gym, mm-hmm. which not many people do, it's not like a fun place to go. It's not like I'm leaving work and being like, yes, now I get to go to the gym. Yes, like yeah. I feel like it, I mean it does relieve stress, but it wouldn't be my first stress reliever. It's just yeah. a byproduct. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe you and I are different. I don't. I mean, we're we're different from each other. But what I mean is, we're different than a lot of people. Maybe a lot of people have a lot of aggression. 
and they just want to go to the gym. And the and just, gym is a healthy way to get it out. I can see that. I, I know some people who go to the gym when they're real, real worked up. And they want to get in there and just push some weight around, and uh-huh. get some get some anger out, threaten people. For me, I'm not much of an angry guy, so like the gym is never a place where I'm really taking anger yeah. out. Yeah, and for me, I don't think that hitting the gym, I don't think that that would get my aggression out. Sometimes I do. I, I have a little a little anger in me, but you, I don't, you are kind of like an angry little man. Yeah, I do. I have a temper, but do. I don't think that the gym would assist me with that all that much. I think it would just frustrate me more because I'd be like, why am I not stronger? Yeah, it would. You'd go in there and then you'd see other people doing more than you and yep. you're like, this is ridiculous. I'd get jealous. What do they have that I don't? Uh-huh. I'd be struggling to even do a uh, bench press with just the bar and that, then I'd get and then I'd get real upset. It, it, it caused me more stress. That's not, at least, you know what, I can, I can respect the stress answer. You want to know what I think is the worst answer? Like when we're talking about like reasons to go to the gym, yeah. you know what the worst answer is? What's the worst? The worst answer is to get stronger. Like <laughs> people say, I want to go to the gym to get stronger. Like obviously that's like the point of the gym, I guess. Yeah. But like if you if that's your reasoning, that's crazy. Like what are you? Are you like some barbarian? Yeah. Like what is the point? I mean, yet again, I know that people want to be strong and fit and I get all that. But, like, what are you getting stronger for? Like, the amount of times in, in my life that I even use my strength uh-huh. is so low. Like yeah, when what, was, when was the last time you really struggled to pick something up? I want to go to the gym to get stronger so that I can help more friends move. Yeah, like, what, yeah, what are like, you using the strength for? Right. Like, it makes no sense. Like, for me, I would rather go to the gym every day and be embarrassingly weak and just embarrass myself at the gym. Uh-huh. If it makes me, if I could leave with like shredded abs and super toned, yeah. I'd be so fine just barely benching the bar if I was able to leave there and look good every day. Yeah, if you looked good doing yeah, that. Yeah, I don't care if people are looking at me at the gym, they're like, oh but my you, gosh, that guy's so weak. I'm not talking still, to anybody in the gym anyway. If you're still flabby with a dad bod, but you can bench press a, a truck. It doesn't even matter. Yeah, what's the point? Like, I How get it, you're strong. You? Good for you. But at the same time, the only thing motivating me at the gym is, dang, I'm probably going to the pool this Saturday. I want to be able to take my shirt off and not embarrass myself. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio you. Was it too early to start thinking about Halloween? No, it's not. I was just, this is crazy. Yesterday, I was talking about Halloween costumes with a friend. No way. I swear. You're already I planning? Swear, I was texting a friend, uh-huh. and I was sending them TikToks of Halloween costumes. Oh. What, what is it? July 12th? Uh-huh. This year, I'm July ready. July 13th. This year, I'm going to be ready. What do you, do you have any, what are your costumes in mind so Well, far? I didn't, I wasn't doing them for myself. I was sending oh. ideas for them because we were on the topic. Oddly enough, they didn't send any for me, <laughs> so I could still use some, but I was already brainstorming for them. Uh-huh. Um, the best one we came up with was Dora the Explorer. Oh, yeah, that'd be. Dora's a, ki- I mean, killer costume, right? Yeah, you have to get the right haircut for that, though. She's already got it. She's already she has, <laughs> conveniently has the Dora the Explorer haircut. All the time. Well, then you have to do it. She's already on that. Yeah. She's got that down. She already has the look down. She just needs a backpack, a she singing just, backpack. A literal singing backpack. And that's she'll all be she needs. Ready to go. Give her that uh, in a map. Well, not only do you think it's not too early to start thinking about Halloween, Home Depot is on the same page. They've put out their catalog of yard decorations and Home Depot well known. For a few years back, introducing the giant 12-foot yard skeleton. They call him Skelly. I've seen that fairly frequently uh, around my neighborhood. People seem to... uh, There's one house that has several of the 12-foot skeletons. But this year, they're upping the ante. They're going even bigger. Let me introduce you to the 13-foot animatronic singing Jack Skellington. From the Nightmare Before Christmas. Good movie. It is a good movie. Underrated movie. Watch, watch it every year, actually. One of the better Halloween, maybe the best Halloween movie. Uh huh. Would you say there's a better one? I can't even mm, think of it. Halloween. I can't even, can you even think of it? I guess you're, people would say Hocus Pocus. Mm, Hocus Pocus. They people also have some new that. Hocus Pocus stuff. Halloween Town. People would say that. <laughs> would they? I think some people would. <laughs> maybe they Children. Would. Yeah. Uh, um. No. Yeah. It's definitely up there. It's 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 got a compelling case for the best Halloween movie, and now you could decorate your yard with a 13-foot Jack Skellington that will sing Jack's Lament for you.
I bet it has to be expensive, right? It has to be expensive. I don't even want to look at the price because there's no way I can afford it, which is too bad because I would like it. I would like to have it. I like Halloween decorations that aren't too scary, that are more fun, that everyone can enjoy, you know, especially when you think that, like, at Halloween, kids are coming by. You don't want to scar them for life. See, let me ask you this. Is it worth it to put up Halloween decorations if you live in a place where the, nobody trick-or-treats mm. and not many people will see your house? It's going to be pretty much just the people that come over. Or maybe your three neighbors. That's pretty much how it is for me. I have yeah. three neighbors, and then other than that, it's like friends I have over are going to see it. I think. You, I, I mean, mean I'm not getting the 13 You live in like a skeleton. dead end lot, right? Yeah, I live on a. Yeah, we have like a little cul de sac. Yeah. Your neighbor, I think your neighbors would think it's weird. If I had a, I'm not, I'm, if I did a 13 footer, oh, that would yeah. be weird. Yeah. But what if I had something a little bit more low key? I'm, I'm going through the slides. Like, what if I had like a little Yoda with like his, his green lightsaber and like the, the Halloween hat on? What's, I mean, I see it here, but what's Halloween about Yoda? I don't know. He's green. He That's actually cool. scary too. His eyes don't look right. Come on. That's it scary. It says, beware of the dark side. You must. Hmm. Uh, of the I, ones I'm clicking through, that seems like the one that would make the most sense. I don't think it's wrong to do that. I don't think it's wrong to decorate. I just think, again, the bigger you go, the more your neighbors are going to go. There's only four of us. Why are you doing it this? It needs to be low-key. That's why that's, that was yeah. the smallest one I could find. But HB, or, uh, Home Depot really leaning into a lot of the Disney inflatable decorations for this year. Um, and they are, I mean, they're cute. They're cute. Some of them, they do have some scary ones, but a lot of them are, you know, more, more something that everyone can enjoy. Which are the better ones anyway? Yeah, I think so. So uh, now you can start thinking about Halloween. It's not, I mean, it's kind of like the next fun holiday. It is the next fun one. It, it really is. Which is kind of sad. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. Get ready to text in. Your thoughts on Choice Champions. It's our Thursday tradition. Isaiah and I take turns, snake draft style, picking um, uh, subjects from a different topic each week, and you get to decide which one of us chooses the better team. This week, our topic is childhood fears. We've all got a lot of these. Maybe some specific to you. Uh Let's not make this super dark and gloomy. At least I'm not going to. Hudson might. (laughs) But if you've got some real childhood fears, as long as they're not super sad, let's do those. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I Isaiah has the first pick because uh, Nikki filled in last week. She got the first pick, so that means it's your turn to do uh, to do the number one pick. I wonder how you're gonna differ from me on these. I don't uh-huh. know if we're gonna do these the same way. Yeah. But we'll be able to tell real quick with our first couple picks. Yeah. If we're on the same page or not. But childhood fears coming in number one. I'm picking the basement. The basement. The basement. There was nothing scarier as a child than looking down those stairs in the basement when it's dark. Uh-huh. The worst. And, and and the worst thing possible is if your light switch is in a weird place uh-huh. where you have to walk a certain amount of steps down there yeah. before you can flip the light on. The basement for me is scary, scary place. That was bad for you, huh? Oh, it was the number one scary thing in my house. That's crazy. If I was alone in the basement by myself, that was the scary, scariest place I could possibly be. For me, now I get to now I get to pick two. Yeah, it's your turn. It's this your one's turn. way different. Spankings. Spankings. Yeah. You kind of. I mean, I was kind of on the same page with that in a different way. Oh, but you. Were- I had something that I, w- I was going to pick. A similar. That would be similar to that. But yeah. I'll, I'll let you have that one. Spankings I, is a good choice. I was scared of spankings, yeah. Everybody was scared of spankings. I wonder, I do you ever wonder, did you get, you got spanked, right? Yeah. You wonder how your life would be different if you were in a household that didn't spank? I don't know what I would be like. Yeah. I feel like I, I, I don't know how I'd be different. I just feel like I would be different. I'd probably be worse. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'd be much more defiant. Yeah. Uh, so that's my number one one fear as a child. And then number two, I will take for my second pick, losing teeth. Losing teeth? Yeah. That's a weird one. I wasn't afraid of the dentist, really? but I was afraid. I remember being like, what, when do you lose your first tooth? When you're like five, six or something? Yeah. I have no idea. I don't know how old I was. I just know. You were afraid. I was real afraid, and it didn't go after losing a tooth. You think like, oh, it's not that bad. It took me several teeth before I finally 
gave up on it being a fear. See, and I a problem. I feel like kids wanted to lose teeth because that meant that the the tooth fairy was coming. Yeah, like you would kind of like wiggle it. You try to wiggle it out. It kind of felt good uh-huh. when it was loose like that. You kind of oh no, it I hated that. Really? Yeah, I like liked having a loose tooth. Eating stuff when it was, was kind of on its last legs, and my parents would be like, "Come on, just let us pull it out." And uh, and I'd be like, "No, I'm afraid." It would hurt. I thought it would hurt. Yeah, that's fair. I think I was afraid of it, like, actually coming out. All right. You got um, two picks here. All right. My next one. I'm going to go shots. Oh, shots. That's shots a good one. Shots were so uh-huh. scary. I remember, like, my, when my parents would say, we're going to the doctor to get a shot, which I, th- I don't even know. Yet again, I don't have any children, so I don't know how frequent shots happened. Mm-hmm. But when I was a kid... It felt like they were once a month. Yeah. Like, it felt like I was going to the doctor once a month and getting a shot, when in reality, I probably got, like, six shots my whole life. Um, But at the time, whenever my mom said, we're going to get shots, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Scary Big day fear. for me. Um, And then the next one I'm going with, I'm going dentist office. Oh, yeah. I was afraid of the dentist. I still, I have a dentist appointment today. And I'm afraid. I'm a, still afraid. Yeah, I've never, never gotten gave over up on it. that one. I'm nervous. I don't know what they're going to do to me in there. It's always the same thing, and I'm scared. I'm going to go for my last pick with just an, an obvious easy one. The dark. The dark? Yeah. You're going to go the dark. What kind of kid isn't afraid of the dark? I mean, everybody in, in certain instances, that's like a lot of my basement pick. If it's dark down there, it makes it ten times scarier. I, th- I thought of a lot of like off ramps of the dark, and I just think I should just go with the dark. Because right, well, sh- I was thinking about like different strangers or like yeah. just monsters and stuff they could be. But it was all that wasn't a problem when it was light. So all right, you guys can go ahead and start getting the text in who you think won, and we'll do some honorable mention picks coming up next. Yeah, I can go ahead and give me your list one more time. It is the uh, spanking, losing teeth, and the dark. And then I am the basement. Shots and the dentist office. 8772 Radio U, who came up with a better team of childhood fears. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Choice Champions, our Thursday tradition. Today on Choice Champions, we picked Isaiah and I childhood fears. Isaiah, your team is... I've got the basement, shots, and the dentist office. And I've got spankings, losing teeth, similar to the dentist, but not the same, and the dark. Text in which team you think is uh, the winner at 8772-RADIO-U. Some of the texts have already come in. Carl, definitely four. The spankings, he said that was a scary thing as a kid. Uh-huh. He said if you were not spanked, you would be one of the kids eating Tide Pods today. Mm, perhaps. <laughs> we, we also had Glenn get in, who also said, he said we played hide and seek in the dark in the cemetery by their church. He said it was awesome. <laughs> said, so not what so kind of kid isn't afraid of the dark? Glenn. Glenn was not afraid of the dark. Yeah. Um, he said spankings were his number one fear. Uh-huh. Coming in for him at number two was the dentist. Mm. So it looks like he's giving you the edge there. Uh, yeah. Matthew, Close call. Matthew said Isaiah's fear picks are the scarier ones. And then Susanna says it's a draw. I was scared of my grandparents' basement. And I hated having loose teeth and losing them, but the other things didn't bother her so much. That's I think the basement I don't connect with as much. I get it because I've you know I've seen Home Alone and stuff, but most of my time growing up, we didn't have like a scary basement. We had a basement you just lit, did stuff in. Was that a fun place for you? Because the basement for me, so, we didn't have like fun stuff down yeah, there to like play with. It wasn't a finished parts. basement. No, it was finished, but we just didn't have like all. We always stayed upstairs and played uh, like the living room. We played outside. It wasn't like a go-to spot for us. No, uh, I went. I guess it was when I was a little older. We had a finished basement that was like the, where the TV was and everything. Oh. So then, like that was good times. But I do remember also envying the friends that had like really cool basements. Though. Oh yeah, but, then it wouldn't be scary. Yeah, but I was not afraid of any basement. I was probably more afraid of attics. Oh, attics. attics. We never, we never or, went to the attic. Here's a good one. The shed. The shed. Yeah. What was in the shed? I, I had a barn. Uh-huh. I was afraid to go in the barn by myself. I don't even know what was in the shed. We just had a, a like, oh, here's a great one. Hornets, wasps, bees. Oh, yes. That should have made my list. That, that should have made scary. my list. I, that's an omission on my part. I still think I made a pretty strong list, but... I was afraid of getting stung, for sure. Real afraid of pain as a child. Yeah, big, big fear was being hurt or just mm-hmm. pain in general. Dee said she's going with me as well. Another one that I wish that I, that I considered was just being outside alone in the dark. 
because at my house yeah. we had we had like an outdoor fridge that was in a barn uh-huh. that was disconnected from the house. And there were times when you had to run out there uh-huh. to get like a certain drink or whatever it was, a certain food yeah. that was out there. And that was, or like I had also had a barn that had wood in it. Okay. And in the winter time, you had to go out to the barn to get wood because we had a, a wood burning fire. And yeah. like in our house, the heat of the house. And if it was your turn to go get wood, that was scary. Yeah. Having to go out to the barn by yourself at uh-huh. like nine o'clock. It's dark outside. Like, what? What biggest fear being taken? I don't know. Yeah, that seemed like a pretty big one. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, that's up there. Well, uh, I think we came up. We've uh, reawakened some painful memories, perhaps. Uh, we come up with like, some good lists, and I believe I won once again. I remain undefeated in the choice champions. Oddly enough, I feel like I've won so many of these. Yet at the end, it seems as if you always declare yourself the winner. <laughs> Disinformation, mispronunciations, bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. Now, today is a special day. It's National French Fry Day. And so, what better time to fire up the Riot Hotline? 8772 Radio U. For you to text in your favorite French fry. Ooh, I love a good fry. Yeah. There's nothing better than just a nice, hot, crispy fry. Now, how about this? How about to, because it's National French Fry Day, there's a lot of deals out there on fries. And so let me list off a few of these deals for you well, to maybe jumpstart your mind and start leading you in the direction of what the best fries are. Let's get it going. I'm ready. I love some deals. Let's start with Burger King. If you put in an order... In the app for Burger King, if you're a Royal Perks member, you will get a free order of fries of any size with any purchase. That's a good little one. That's uh, not bad. What about Carl's Jr. and Hardee's? They're actually offering free fries through the rest of the year if you buy fries today. No, they're not. Yeah. How are you doing that? They're all, uh, you, I mean, you have to be a rewards member. But uh, then you'll be able to get like a small fry every day the rest of the year if you'd like. That's a pretty good deal. That's pretty good with a purchase, of course. Uh, how about this one? This is weird. Checkers and rallies, great fries. Fantastic uh, fries. Actually, one of the only things that's good about checkers and rallies. Underrated fries. But uh, from tomorrow through Sunday, they're offering a free fries deal, uh, an extra large order of fries. But uh, that starts tomorrow, and it's through the weekend, and you have to use the app. Okay. Um, And then this one I think is good. If you have Uber Eats, if you order from a participating restaurant and put fries in your order, Heinz will give you $5.70 off automatically. That's a good deal. That is a good deal. That might be the best one yet. Yeah, because most fries, it is Uber Eats, so it gets more expensive, but most fries aren't $5.70. It's covering... The fries and probably the delivery fee. Yeah, and, the, and, and then some. So uh, some of those participating restaurants include Arby's, Buffalo Wild Wings, Carl's Jr., Checkers, Chili's, as we, uh, so a lot of the places we mentioned, as well as, uh, oh, IHOP is included in there as well. So you can check in on that. Uh, so now you have some ideas of fry deals. Now tell us at 8772-RADIO-U, favorite French fry, and we'll see... Some of the answers coming up next here. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. I love days like today where our job just is so easy. We just talk about French fries. It's National French Fry Day. People are texting in their favorite French fries. You could be one of them at 8772 Radio U. And uh, I like I like the responses. I like the, what we're seeing here. I saw Erin text in. She said, Dairy Queen has the best fast food French fries. That's a hot take. That is a hot take, especially because I was looking in preparation at lists of some of the best and worst fast food fries. And uh, Dairy Queen, not... Not ranked very highly. But these lists, I was looking at lists too to try uh, to get some try to get some creative juices flowing. Yeah, because I don't want to miss any. Yeah, and I look at these lists and it's just total crap. The list that I looked at uh-huh. didn't have two of what I consider the top five fries even on the list. Okay, of top twenty five fast food fries. Yeah, 
And what are those fries? Uh, two of the ones what that I the ones consider. That you, missed, that you said were missing. I had I have four that I consider the top for me. Okay. The two that are missing. Mount Rushmore, if you will. Yeah, precisely. Uh, the two that were missing, which I think are my top two. Uh huh. We've got five guys. Yeah, a lot of people texting in for five guys. I see Brad here checking in with the five guys. Also Ben and Glenn, all saying five guys. Now, do you favor? The Cajun fries are the standard. I do the standard. I'm not a huge Cajun fry guy in general. Uh-huh. If you did that at Five Guys, I wouldn't be opposed to it. It's just not really my style of fry. But for that not to be on the top 25 list, yeah, it's just egregious, questionably five, wrong. Five Guys has some great fries. Uh, I like the Cajun. I do enjoy them, but their regular fries are real good for vinegar on them as well, which mm-hmm. is something I love to do. And they got that vinegar there, which yeah. not a lot of fast food places do, uh-huh. uh, as well as their ketchup's fire too. But also, along with that, in a very similar way, Penn Station's fries left off almost very every good. list. Very good. Widely underrated. Maybe that's because that's not as a well-known, like it's not as big of a chain. Yeah, possibly that way too. So people just don't even know about it. But yeah, it's those their fries are amazing. And then I'll wrap up mine and we can get to some of your guys's. I'm also throwing rally slash checkers. I love those ones. If yeah. I'm getting if I'm going to Kroger and I'm spending extra money on fries, I know they have those rallies fries in the frozen oh, yeah. section. And those are fantastic to warm up and eat. And then also Arby's is a uh, a hit for me always with the curly fries. I saw Susanna text in also with you on the rallies and checkers. Owen also saying rallies, but he says fries just haven't been the same since we stopped using MSG. Oh, nice. <laughs> I like um, it. Another good text in from Grace. She said she's actually been going through and specifically going to different fast food restaurants to try their fries. So this is like she's putting in the work here. And she says best two places, Pizza Hut. And KFC. I know KFC. People like KFC's fries. I don't care for them as much. I like I like their fries. They're I think okay. they're pretty good. They're okay. They yeah. got that similar kind of similar kind of like rallies feel to them, mm-hmm. but they that different different level of crispness. Yeah. I've never had Pizza Hut's fries. If I'm being honest, I do like Pizza Hut. I didn't even know Pizza had Hut fries. had fries at all. Me either. I, so now I'm surprised. Now you know. Now you know. Um, I also see that Mitch texted in saying waffle fries. I, oh, I'm I love assuming some from Chick Fil A. Waffle fries are great. For if you want sauce. Yep. But if you just want a straight up fry, I don't think I would choose Chick-fil-A's or just any waffle fry in general. Um, but I'm surprised I'm not seeing anybody texting in with Arby's, with the curly fries. Arby's is good. The curly fry, it's kind of a standard, just well-known good fry. Yeah. Like if you said curly fries are your, or your Arby's curly fries are number one, some people would question it, but at the same time, I think it's a well-known good fry. Another one I'm surprised people are excluding, not that it's my favorite, although I think they're good, is nacho fries from Taco Bell. Mm-hmm, those are a fan I favorite as well. they would be uh, more popular, uh, but I, I don't know. I, it, it's McDonald's also. Nobody's texting to McDonald's. Well, nobody's going to text to McDonald's as their favorite fry. That'd be crazy. Why not? They're great. Because you can't do that. But they're good. They're good, but they're you, if that's good. your favorite fry, everyone's going to be like, got it. Lame choice. <laughs> Jocelyn didn't know that uh, KFC and Pizza Hut had fries either. So we're not alone. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Smoking is bad for you. Uh, I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but I think there's there's not a smoker out there who's, who's oblivious to that. They even any person, no matter how much they smoke, will probably tell you the same thing. Yeah, it's bad for me, but I just can't stop. But there's some aspect of smoking affecting your health you might not be taking into account. Obviously, cancer and stuff like that, right? But did you know that smoking could also give you a green hairy tongue? Oh, what now? You saying what now? Uh, let me repeat that: a green hairy tongue. Sounds like one of my least favorite tongues. Yeah. It's got to be a bottom three tongue. Uh-huh. You uh, you smoke and you run the risk of not only developing any number of diseases, you also run the risk of turning your tongue into the Philly fanatic. It is a possibility. In fact, it happened just recently to an Ohio man. They say it was set off. It was a combo of things that not only was it from smoking, but it was the combo of him being a smoker and taking some kind of like antibiotics. And so they kind of reacted those two things to give him an, but I have pictures of it here. Isaiah, have you looked at them? I, I nearly, I nearly lost it. Yeah. Like I nearly threw up, honestly. 
I was I was gagging for a little bit. Uh huh. I that's the first time on the show where I've actually I've almost fallen apart there. <laughs> that was close. That was wildly close to it being the end of the show for me. When you that saw was, the pictures of his green hair. I can't hairy even tongue. look at it. I can't look at it. Yeah. For whatever reason, that story a chord with me that really hurt my chest. You're never gonna smoke a di- a, a, a single cigarette, are you? Like you know that feeling After when this. you get that in your in your in your throat. Uh-huh. You get that acid feeling in your throat where yep. you're like, this could go downhill quickly. I just had that, and I've never had that in front of a microphone before. But it shot a fear into my body that was scarier than the basement <laughs> you don't when I was a little kid. You don't have anything to be afraid of. You're you're not a smoker. I know, but the the fear was I was going to throw up on the show. <laughs> that was my fear. I wasn't scared about having a green airy tongue. Yeah, I was scared that I was going to lose the sausage I just ate. Uh, all over the board and get fired. I, uh, I, I understand. Like you see a lot of uh, the PSAs or whatever. For some reason, for a long time on YouTube, it, the ad for me would be the guy telling me not to smoke. He'd be like, "It, it." Uh, I don't know if you ever saw it. The guy'd be like, "When you smoke, it puts all kinds of metal in your lungs. It's oh, I metal see that one. in your lungs." I saw it so many times, so many times, and that didn't do anything to me. Like I'm not gonna smoke, but that wasn't like, "Oh, now I'm afraid." Metal in my lungs. But <laughs> you show me this. This is what they should be putting on all of the anti-smoking PSA. You want people to stop smoking? Show them the picture of this guy's green hairy tongue. That is what will convince people to, to get off the stuff. Yeah, that's a pretty convincing. I mean, I'm convinced. After seeing that, yeah, that hurt my heart. Seeing that right there. I didn't know this. I'm was, still shook it. I didn't know it was, was possible for your tongue to sprout hair. Not, never mind green hair, but it is possible, and it could happen if you smoke. So that's a PSA for you. Uh-huh. Disinformation. Mispronunciations. Bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. It is The Riot on Radio U, and we have on the phone right now Marty and Fern of Social Club Misfits. Good morning, guys. This must be a, right, go. A, a huge, a huge honor for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's a privilege. <laughs> absolutely. Oh yeah, the privilege is uh, is all ours. It's good to talk to you guys, and uh, we have to ask first and foremost. Isaiah, today is is National French Fry Day. It's an incredible day for so many, and we've had a lot of. Our listeners get in this morning and let us know their favorite French fry. We've talked about our own as well, and we want to get both of your guys's because as they already knew that you guys were coming on, and so we told them, we said, don't worry, we'll ask, we'll ask Social Club Misfits <laughs> to give us the all-time answer of your guys' favorite French fry of all the fast food places. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oof. Fern, what's your favorite French fry? I mean, there's so you many know, varieties. Hey. Marty, but you know where I'm going to go with this. This is, see, you're going to get two answers from me. You're going to get pre-alkaline vegan answer. And then, because I'm an alkaline vegan, so I don't eat French fries technically. But when I did, I got to tell you, man, I don't know if you guys remember when Toy Story first came out. I know I'm dating myself. When when the first Toy Story first came out, Burger King um, switched their fries because Mr. P- Mr. Potato Head was like a big star in the thing. So yeah, yeah. They were getting they they switched their fries into a new recipe, um, and so I remember when that fry came out, and that was my favorite fry. No way, that's a good I, 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 answer. That, that was a good, good fry. That was a great fry. That yeah, great they fry. surprised yeah. everybody. I'm like, where y'all get that fry? Y'all really <laughs> ended up with the potato, man. He really paid the price. My favorites when they're like now with real potato, and you're like, wait a second, what was I eating before this? <laughs> they're like now the the potato and they're fresh, this. and you're like, wait, what? What have we been doing this whole time? What was that hybrid I was I was loving so with much. less yeah. plastic. You're like, wait, wait a second, less plastic. Wait a second. You know? <laughs> uh, my favorite fry. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go totally left wing with this one. My favorite fry might be. Uh, the, remember the KFC fry? Remember remember oh, how good that that. that oh, big yeah. Wedge. yeah. The wedge, the wedge, the wedge. wedge. Yes, I'm with the wedge. I miss the wedges. Gotta love a wedge. I'm a little bit it. of wedge action is really good. <laughs> what do you? What'd you guys choose though? What'd you guys choose? Mm, your one? We love. Uh, I don't know if you guys have in your neck of the woods. If you have Penn Station, but they have great fries. Fantastic fries at Penn Station. Oh no, don't. Oh, it's like a sub place that we have up here, and it's uh, yeah. If you guys have, it's kind of similar to Five Guys. If you've done Five yep. Guys fries, mm-hmm. they're pretty similar yeah. to those. Oh man, National French Friday! Now my, don't tell my wife. Don't say this too loud. My wife's gonna be like, "Let's go to In and Out 
And let's go yep. to, uh, you know, great. start to pick different places. <laughs> yeah, it's automatically, yeah. It was the, like, one of our favorite topics of all time. Whenever this comes around, a favorite French fries, the, the, the listeners can't stop texting in about it because everybody has their own, whether it's Arby's or McDonald's or Wendy's. Everybody has a hard opinion on French fries. <laughs> Who thought, who thought the Arby's fries? Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Arby's fries oh, are good. good. I didn't know. Was that you had said? Where's going? <laughs> I love the curly. I can't do the crinkle, though. The crinkle no, the in Arby's. Oh, I'm going to lie. They're right. They do the curlies. That's right. The yeah, curlies are good. You know what, guys? We should... Guys, I like the, uh, Miami subs fry, the curly. Oh yeah, that's a great fry. You know, we should do a contest. Who has the worst fry? Which restaurant has the worst fry? Wendy, oh, we I ain't gonna lie. Sorry, Wendy. <laughs> Wendy's has a whack fry. It's pretty. It's pretty like limp fry. <laughs> See, fries I was gonna, gonna, like, I was gonna say Burger King now has the worst fries. I, yeah, I wouldn't know, man. Wow, did they lose? They lost the torch. They lost the touch. I think so. No more real yeah, potato. No Dang. more real, Mr. Potatoes. I mean, they don't call him Fry King. So. <laughs> uh, it wasn't organic enough. He lost the crown. <laughs> <laughs> I got to ask you guys, um, when I think of your music, everything you put out, and I can't say this for very many artists, I think of where you guys are from. Like, I think of, it makes me think of Miami. Do you guys still live in Miami right now? Miami. Yeah. I just, okay, so I still have my house in Florida. I just moved. My coastal resident. 40, yeah, 43 days ago, officially. Wow. 43 days ago, I moved to, moved to Orange County, uh, California. Hey. Uh, you know, very. Fresh. You know, it's funny, when you, when you move away, you're like, you have so much pride in the Florida, and like, for me, like, I'll meet somebody, and they're like, yeah, I'm from Miami, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's, that's so amazing. I'm like, well, I've been gone for 43 days. I don't know, it feels like a, an eternity, you know, I've been back twice. But I've only been gone for 43 days, and uh, yeah, but very much we embody the Miami music scene in a lot of what we do. Yes, I can, I can definitely tell. If, uh, so since you know some Miami so well, if we came and visited Miami and you guys were there, oh, what yeah. would you have us do? What Where are we you, headed? Yeah, how are we having a good time? We're gonna have you. We're gonna have you dancing in all the Latin Cuban cafes down there. That's the oh, first man. thing we're gonna start. Nice. Oh, I love we're that. Gonna nice. down. We're gonna walk you through some Cuban sandwiches at Versailles. In yeah. Miami, oh. Fern, what's another great spot for these guys to, to visit? No, listen, I, I know I know I'm the alkaline guy, but I know all these spots too because I have kids and I got a wife who loves food too. And I gotta tell you, I got I would take you to Don Pepe's for some a Mex Cuban cuisine. It's my favorite restaurant. I take all my people who come down. I take you to Crumble for some giant size. Oh, hey. come on. Come on. Yeah, man. Or if closed, we'll take you over to midnight because they're never closed. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, we'll take you to Jackson's, which is a Florida staple. It's uh, it's on Dania Beach Boulevard. It's our ice cream staple, Jackson's. They have the vaudeville man playing piano when you walk in. And oh when gosh. you go there, you make sure you order the kitchen sink. It's literally mm. a huge kitchen sink filled with ice cream of everything. Dang. Uh, oh, I love that. You can Google it, the kitchen sink. I gotta, hey, it's not, it's but, not hard uh, to convince me to come to Miami, yeah. so if you guys want me, we can make it happen. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's kind of happy. Between me and Marty, we have it all. He's on California, and I'm in the, I'm in the uh, south side of California. Oh, perfect, perfect. Love it, guys. All right. Uh, so, uh, look, you guys just had the Everyone Loves a Comeback Story Platinum Edition. That's out now, right? It is out now, and uh, a lot of people ask us, like, hey, would you... What's a platinum edition? And, uh, you know, in, in Florida, I know around the world, everyone has, has experienced this, but when you go to sleep as a kid, as like me, you know, you're like in high school, middle school, as, as a kid, you wake up to this loud, it's the rhythm of the night. Like, <laughs> it's like 45 dance songs for you just yes. now. And so those were called platinum edition dance yeah. albums. And so we thought, you know, we're going to make a little bit of a dance album. We have to go with the platinum edition. And, uh, you know, we, it's funny because originally we were trying to make one of those commercials that would wake you up in the middle of the night. We yes. were going to get like to old Toby Mac songs, old, uh, Amy Grant songs and then <laughs> yep. I would, like put us in and then social club. And we just could not get the, we couldn't finish it, get the clearance on all that stuff. But we, uh, you know, when we were a little, when I was younger, I remember waking up and I'd always have like a soundtrack and something would play. And, you know, it's just like a, what we try to do is always bring like a nostalgic factor of, you know, growing up in South Florida, what did it feel like? How did, what did it sound like? And so for us, dance music was, uh, wasn't was just a separated genre. You would be able to do hip-hop, like rock, and dance music. And we had something called Power 96, and Power 96 
Hearts was just literally a mixtape. You know, you're listening to one rock song, and then it goes a dance song, and then it goes hip-hop, then it goes pop. And it just, you know, for us, it, it was like crossing genres at all times. And so for us, that we love that. And so that's really what started the sound that we have created. And that's why Social Club has crossed genres with rap and dance and hip-hop, you know, hip-hop pop, hip-hop rock, real hip-hop, because that's just the South Florida melting pot that we lived in. Dang. You're I love that. You're speaking my language right now. I mean, now. there's so many genres you guys are talking about. I would just include it all in just like the party genre. It's just whenever yeah, you guys right? play, I'm like, yeah. it's a party automatically. No, I always think about it like the multiverse. Social Club is a musical multiverse. And, you know, we we, we have so many genres that we're multi-genre. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Look, at, look, at it like, look at it like hip-hop. Like I was telling Marty this the other day. Hip-hop is like 50 years old now. And like this is the first time that you actually see hip-hop actually being challenged by other genres of music. You got Afro B. You got a lot of other things really stepping strong. Um, and I, I've never really seen hip-hop, you know, like... You have so many different, you know, genres of hip hop itself, you know. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, it's wild. Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy time right now, and, and I think your guys' genre, whatever genre avenue you guys go down, it always makes for solid beats every time. Yeah, everyone loves a comeback Thank story. You. The Platinum Edition, we've been uh, we've heard a few of the tracks. we got to check out that full uh, Platinum Edition because uh, love what we've heard so far. Marty and Fern from Social Club, thanks so much, guys, for uh, checking in with us this, this morning. Guys, enjoy some fries today. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you know we will. Have a great one, guys. You All got right, it, bye, guys. guys. Social Club, it's the riot. You just heard the worst of the worst. We'd give you the best of the best, but we'd have to find that. As soon as we do, you'll be the first to know.